Is Brian Murphy the best dungeon master? Hold on, let's back up a second. First of all, hello. Second of all, I'm in my best Brian Murphy cosplay, I have glasses and a flannel on, and that's as close as I can get. We're facing the other way, so yeah, that's fun. Also, I have figured out how to fix the left ear only problem. Sorry to everyone who listened to the last video entirely in their left ear. Now, who is Brian Murphy and is he the best dungeon master? Brian Murphy is the dungeon master for Not Another D&D Podcast, also known as NADPod, which is available on all the platforms that you can get podcasts. The main cast is Brian Murphy, aka Murph as the dungeon master, Emily Axford, Caldwell Tanner, Jerm Berwitz, and Jake Hurwitz. This group hails from the college humor slash dropout family of creators, with both Murph and Emily being full-time cast members on Dimension 20. Caldwell Tanner being the co-founder of Drawfee, which has a ton of college humor alums come through to guest on the show, and Jake having spun his college humor show, Jake and Amir, off into the Jake and Amir show, which is a podcast that helped them launch HeadGum, the network that Not Another D&D podcast, is hosted on or distributed by. And NADPOD is very popular, ranked super well in podcast lists in general, let alone improv podcasts or comedy podcasts. So how can Murph be undervalued? I mean, maybe read an economics course, but that's not how value works. Firstly, I think Murph gets overlooked a lot simply because the cast chemistry on NADPOD is insane. Emily shines even brighter on NADPOD than she does on Dimension 20. She's insanely chaotic very creative. Caldwell brings an unyielding earnestness, which is perfect for whimsy or emotional depth, whichever one is really necessary in the moment. And Jake has fantastic comedy chops, and he lends a perspective to tabletop gaming scene that helps ground the group in a very real way. It's a very small group. It's three players and a DM, rather than the six that a lot of shows go with. So it's easy to let the cast shine, and they do. Secondly, NADPOD is an audio show, so it can't really compare in the same ways and therefore isn't really compared in the same ways to Critical Role and Dimension 20, which both have very good visuals. But because they're kind of not in the same category, I think Murph kind of gets left out in ways that he shouldn't. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of it all, I really want to say there is no best DM. The best DM is the one that is having fun with their table. You might be the best DM. Your DM might be the best DM. They probably are because they're DMing for you. So don't take this as Murph is the best and he's so much better and everyone should be like Murph because that's not how it works. All this is saying is, well, to phrase it a little bit more wholesomely than the title, what makes Murph a great DM? I think one thing that Murph does really well that goes underappreciated is saying no. No, God, please, no, 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 no! Murph is really good at saying no, and not because he just says no. no to his players, but because he's able to redirect what's going on into a productive and communicative scenario. He establishes what the player is hoping to achieve and then provides ways that they can come close to achieving that or attempt to achieve that. Someone goes, hey, can I do this? And he goes, well, that's not how that mechanic works. Why are you trying to use it like that? And they say, why? And he goes, okay, well, you would already know this because of that, or you can use this for that, or this has been in your inventory, or you notice that. And it all gently but firmly directs them as to what they could be doing rather than bending or breaking the rules to try to get an answer for something. It's not denial, it's redirection. Instead of letting players waste time attempting stuff, he's able to clarify what they want and direct them in the right direction. Direction. And because he's good at saying no, his players are comfortable hearing no, and they're even more comfortable trying stuff because, well, it might not work, they might not be allowed to do that, but that's okay. And that comfort allows easy communication. There's no big hang-ups at the table, at least from what we can see as viewers, or listeners rather. There's no worries about saying what they want to do because they know they're going to be treated fairly. And that leads nicely into the second thing that I think Murph does well, which is his rules. Murph's just really good at rule interpretation. He judges fairly and evenly pretty much across the board. But what about rule of cool? What about you can certainly try? How about time and place? How about there's enough ambiguity in the fifth edition rules that you don't actually need to bend them all that much to allow for cool moments when they come up? Maybe it's from playing with Emily so much or the fact that the group is small so they're always trying to do crazy stuff, but Murph is good at interpreting the rules as they're written to allow for creative space without 
accidentally breaking the game in a way that can be exploited. It's what makes him one of the top three judges on Dungeon Court. It's impossible to deny that Murph borrows quite a bit from Brennan Lee Mulligan from Dimension 20 in terms of his DMing style. I mean, he'll, he'll let players use spells for free in order to accomplish a bit and get a laugh. He mixes a lot of machines into his settings, but combat stays very consistent and mechanics that affect important moments also stay very consistent. I also think one of the reasons that, that consistency sticks out to me is because the NADPOD crew has been able to return to settings often and revisit NPCs often. Dimension 20 blasts through settings quickly. When they know a campaign is going to be short, they also know they don't really have to deal with the consequences of ruling things in a certain kind of way, a crazier way, a more entertaining in the moment way, but one that won't be quite as cohesive if it were to continue on more than eight or 10 episodes like they normally do. And to compare Murph settings with Dimension 20 settings for a moment, Dimension 20 settings are very vibrant. They're very unique, but sometimes because they're so unique, it almost feels like the players are playing with them rather than in NADPOD where it actually feels like the characters are inhabiting the setting. They're playing inside of it. Playing inside of it, playing inside of it. But I do think this is a function of Dimension 20 knowing that their campaigns are going to be short and NADPOD wanting to run long campaigns. NADPOD campaigns can be up to 100 episodes, and that is much more akin to Critical Role, who does extremely long form campaigns. Now, I have to be honest, I am less well versed in Critical Role as I am in Dimension 20 and NADPOD, and that's for the reason that I found Critical Role to be an extremely long, slow burn for my tastes. Which is another thing that I think Murph does really well. Pacing. NADPOD episodes come in at around an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Whereas something like Critical Role, which also does the same long form storytelling, tends to clock in between three and five hours. That's of course not an entirely fair comparison because NADPOD is an edited podcast and Critical Role runs their shows live. But that is a creative choice that NADPOD made and I think it pays off really well because the pacing stays punchy. It doesn't feel like NADPOD really drags at any point. The cut down cast and the lack of visuals means they can focus in on what they're good at, which is the comedy and the story, and it works. So much as Murph sort of disappears from the whole greatest DM debate, he's sort of slipped out of this video as well, for some of the same reasons. He makes a lot of good choices early on, and then he sits back, he facilitates fairly. He contributes to great moments, but he never steals the spotlight. He keeps the plot moving, but nothing feels rushed or railroady. He says no, but he communicates. In short, he creates an arena for his players to thrive. And yes, his rigorous adherence to these early decisions does make him a little grouchy. I'll give you that. But that's just the cost of keeping the hooligans in line. His grumpy adherence to rules is kind of like an Old West Sheriff, but an Old West Sheriff that has the trust of the townsfolk. What Murph has been able to achieve with NADPOD, I think is applaudable. I think its consistent quality isn't being celebrated enough. As we see other live play shows struggle to recapture the magic of their earlier seasons, NADPOD's still thriving, it's growing, it's doing great. But more important than any of those sort of visual successes that we see as outsiders, what seems to be the best thing about Murph is that his table's always having fun. At the end of the day, it's escapism, and for all intents and purposes, it seems like the NADPOD crew is able to escape the hands of Murph. And frankly, the DM who seems to be having the most fun, albeit in a bit of a complainy, somewhat head shaky kind of way, and the DM who I personally have the most fun listening to, well, that's Murph.